you need to control two DC motors with your Raspberry Pi? Let me show you how. The parts we'll need are this budget 7 amp motor controller, your Raspberry Pi, and some female to female jumper cables. Two things to focus on are the pins on a controller and the pins on the Pi. Put the boards in the same orientation as I have and let's get started. I created this diagram to outline the pins on both boards and the way that they're going to interact with each other. So we have our two motors with their power and ground going to the headers and we also have power input from some sort of power source going into the header on the other side. Now our pins need to be connected. We're going to connect the two power pins and then we're going to have to put in our grounds. Once we have our power and ground, we're going to attach our input pins as well as our EN pins. And the EN pins are our pulse width modulation pins. So I tried to make this as easy as possible using the colors for the codes. You'll put one end of the female jumper cable on the motor controller and the other one, of course, on the Pi. And again, please be mindful of the orientation. I want to do a quick run through of the motor controller code. Line one. Imported Libraries. I put a hashtag in front of these words Imported Libraries to make them a note. Now a note, since we're working in Python, is always um, started with a hashtag and the hashtag just stops this line from being part of the code that the computer understands. When you put a hashtag in front of anything, it stops that code from being um, compiled by the computer and used by the computer. Instead, it just serves literally as a note to other humans to understand what the code is doing at that time. So you'll see notes in all different types of software written, and it's just to add some clarity to the chaos of what's going on in the code and to let people know what's going on at, the, at that certain spot or if there's some complexity that they should know of before they start to code and to organize things. Now, this note says imported libraries and that's exactly what I'm calling out here. I'm importing this library called rpy.gpio. A library is just code that someone else wrote which you can reference in your code and use instead of having to write all that code from scratch. Now I'm importing this code as GPIO. This is the name, the nickname that I'm calling my imported library name. So imagine that your name was John Smith. John.Smith was your actual name, but people just call you Smith. GPIO is the nickname of the actual full name. But instead of a person, it's a library. Here, we do something similar. We say from time and port sleep. What does this mean? From a library called time, import a module called sleep. We'll get to that soon. Here, we're going to have set mode. This is my note set mode. GPIO.set mode. GPIO.board. What does this mean? Well, here we have the nickname GPIO.set mode. And this dot and then set mode is just a way of setting the mode of the whole board, of all the pins on the board, all the GPIO pins. So this is the way that you do it. You type in gpio.set mode and our set mode is going to be board. Now there's also another set mode called gpio.bcm instead of board. It would say bcm here and that's the Broadcom version, their version of set mode. Now this is just a protocol. It's just a setup. Um, we're just going to go with this for this example. Now, motor one setup. I called out 
these five nicknames for these five pins in order. One, two, three, four, five. Power one, ENA one, IN one, IN two, ground. And then you can see the five following. The way I set it up here works to call out these pins by nicknames instead of numbers. Now, you don't really have to call out power one and ground, but I just did it to clear up uh, confusion. Here we have GPIO.setup. Here's another way of setting up a function using the GPIO library, and this is the way you do it. Now for this one, we have ENA1, GPIO out. What does that mean? There's a pin called ENA1. If you go back to this line, 9, ENA1 corresponds to pin 33. So I'm just saying that GPIO out, pin 33 is an output. It's an output pin. It's not an input pin anymore. We're now calling it an output pin. So now we can output whatever we want, power, PWM, anything. We're, we're making it an output pin. And we're doing that same thing for these other ones. Don't worry about these names. I know that they can be a little confusing, ENA1 and IN1 and IN2. They're just input and PWM pins that we can use. Speaking of which, here's a nickname for GPIO.PWM. PWMA is just a nickname for this line of code. I'm truncated, truncating this line of code into a nickname PWMA. And this little function, gpio.pwm, it lets me set a value in hertz for PWM for this pin, ENA1, which, like we saw before, responds to pin 33. And we're going to start this whole line of code referenced by PWMA at zero, zero hertz. So 0% of the period, for those that are familiar with PWM. Same thing on the Motor 2 setup. And the Motor 1 drive is just changing the duty cycle, first of all, to be 30 from 0, because this is what we started off at, with. And we're setting sleep. So we imported sleep, and we're setting sleep to 5, which means 5 seconds. So this is going to run for 5 seconds. That's what that does. And then we have GPIO output, IN1 GPIO high. So we're setting this IN1 pin, referenced by 31, to high. And we're setting GPIO th this IN2 pin to GPIO low. So this one's high and this one's low. And if you flip these around, you get different results with your direction that the motor rotates in. Same thing can be said for the second motor. That's pretty much it. I'm going to be finishing up and debugging this code soon, and I'll hopefully have it in the description. And at the bottom, as always, we want to have gpio.cleanup. And all this does is it sets back all of our outputs that we made, GPIO outputs. It sets it all back to input. That way, you don't accidentally short circuit something. Say if you plug this pin that's high and you don't know it into something and burn something out. So we just like to have that at the end. Since we're dealing with electricity, we don't want to short circuit anything. And that just kind of brings everything back to the way it was before the code started.